there. Welcome to Signature TV News Highlights for this Wednesday. I am Brenda Etta. No fewer than 22 states have written to the federal government to indicate interest in the National Livestock Transformation Program. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on Agriculture, Andrew Kwasari, who also coordinates the National Livestock Transformation Program, disclosed this in an interview with newsmen on Tuesday, adding that the federal government will start disbursing funds for model ranches in the next week. According to him, states whose governors have written the federal government include Kaduna, Benue, Taraba, Adamawa, Platu, Zamfara, Kano, Ondo, Katsina, Bauchi, Yobe, Borno, Gombe, Nasarawa, Sokoto, Niger, Ekiti, Kogi, Eboy, and Kwara states. Following incessant clashes between farmers and heathers, the federal government in 2018 came up with various ranching models, including Ruga and the NLTP, to settle nomadic herdsmen. Kwasari noted that once the pastoralists were able to get feed and water for their livestock, they would have no business moving cattle from one state to another. The federal government has begun the process for the valuation of property belonging to several politically exposed persons, including the embattled former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Desani Allison Madweke. The Desani property located in Highbrow Banana Island Foreshore Estate, Ikoi, Lagos, include 18 flats and 6 penthouses located at Building 3, Block B, Bella Vitsa, Plot 1, Zone N, Federal Government Layout. Other notable property listed include those belonging to the late Chief of Defense Staff, Air Chief Marshal Alex Bade, whose houses in the Wuse 2 and Meitama High End neighborhoods of Abuja were seized. They include number 14 Adzope Crescent of Kumasi Crescent, number 19 Kumasi Crescent, Wuse 2, and 6 Ume Street, Wuse 2. The federal government had last week begun the process of screening 613 independent valuers expected to manage the sale of the assets alleged to have been illegally acquired, which have now been permanently forfeited to it in about 25 locations throughout the country. The total number of property marked for auction across the country is 1,620, including cars, houses, phones, laptops, vessels and other valuables. The Vice Chancellor of the University of Abuja, Professor Abdul Rashid Naala, has said that the security agencies and the political class were not doing enough to curb the insecurity in the country. He blamed the lack of intelligence for the failure of security forces to arrest the deteriorating situation in the country. Naala made the remarks while speaking at a symposium with the team, kinetic and non-kinetic application in the fight against insecurity in Nigeria. It was organized to mark the inauguration of the university's Center for Security and Legal Studies in Abuja on Tuesday. The VC stressed that the university could not be absolved of blame given its failure to explore research and collaboration with security agencies to proffer workable solutions to end insurgency, banditry, kidnappings and other crimes. The National Youth Service Corps in Gombe State has warned Corps members against wearing mufti in camp. The camp director Al Hassan Ndako made this call while congratulating the 2021 Batch C Stream 1 Corps members on a successful swearing-in ceremony. This was contained in a statement by the NYSC Gombe State, adding that the management has vowed to deal with core members who do not wear their kits. <laughs> President Mohamedou Buhari has expressed hope that the recently launched e-Naira will sustain and reposition Nigeria's economy to attract investors. He also said the Treasury single account, bank verification number, and national identification number initiatives have reinforced his administration's efforts in tackling corruption. Speaking at the fifth edition of Future Investment Initiative Summit in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, speaking at the fifth edition of Future Investment Initiative Summit in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Buari assured that his administration will encourage public and private initiatives that increases investment in health education, capacity building, youth empowerment, gender equality, poverty eradication, climate change and food security. 
The president, who described the summit as a credible forum for interaction between public and private sectors to explore ways of advancing economic growth, development and global prosperity, said Nigeria's diversification efforts have continued to yield results, particularly in agriculture. President Buhari told the gathering of world leaders, global investors and asset managers that the oil sector was already undergoing a reform that would make it more attractive and inclusive. That's a Signature TV News highlight. For more details, visit www.signaturetv.org and please do join us later in the evening for Signature TV News update. On behalf of my producer, Mabelos Obomano, Thanks for watching. I am Brenda Etta.